Hello and welcome to my video today. A few weeks ago, I showed how to get into the engineering menu screen on the Fisker Ocean. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to download the log files onto a USB flash drive. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is access the secret USB cable or service cable that is located on the passenger side of the car. You may need to have a classic pry bar to help you access the area, but it's roughly in this vicinity. So if you want, you can pull up the side panel here. Some clips holding it in place. Then the USB should be right behind this. So let me go and feel around for it. All right, that was fun to get out. So here is the cable and it's a regular USB-A cable. And what we'll do is we'll insert the flash drive onto this end. I just have a regular flash drive here. I'm going to insert it. So, you know, this flash drive is formatted with FAT32, which is the standard formatting for flash drives. You may also use some other formats, but I can't guarantee those to work. All right, we're in the driver's seat and here is the main display. This is the default screen on the car. Go into settings. Then go into vehicle and service. And then up by where it says vehicle information, you're gonna press this about 15 times or so. Then you'll see a white bar come up and then we're gonna type in the code. I did this in my previous video and there's two different codes one for before 2.2 and the one for after with 2.2. Then what you'll need to do is press enter and then place your finger in between the screen here and the button bar and it'll bring up the menu. So let's get a closer look at the menu here. On the top of the screen, there's the engineering menu right here. We're gonna press that. And let's see what we have here. We have log download. We're gonna press that. There are two options. We have log cleaning and download log to USB. We're gonna press this button right here and it's gonna go and copy the files. There may be a few hundred megabytes of files, so it may take a little while for it to go through the process. So we'll be patient and let it do its thing. So don't do anything until this screen stops. All right, log download finished. That only took about a minute or two. Then what we'll do now is press the back button and we are going to go back again to the main menu. And at this point, we can now disconnect the flash drive. So I am going to reach over to do that. All right, so here is the flash drive on the service cable here. So I am going to remove it. And then I'm gonna take this onto my PC and check it out. Oh, and just tuck this behind the panel and press the panel onto the center console area. And also to get out of engineering mode, you press the same area on the screen here that you did before, and you're back into the main menu of the car. And that's it for getting the information downloaded onto the USB flash drive. All right, I've inserted the flash drive into my PC and this is what we get. Here's the folder. 
It is Log Titan Fisker ED and has the date on it. And if I click on it, here are all of the files that are inside of here. A number of log files and text files and a couple of directories. Inside these directories appear to be Android files. So let's see what else we have in here. Uh, one thing that I want to look at closer is this file here called logs.tgz. This is a kind of like a zip file. And what I'm going to do is I am going to extract all those files out of there. I am going to copy them and I'm going to make a new directory called logs. And I'm going to paste them in there. And that'll take a little bit of time because those are compressed. Oh, uh, by the way, there is 32 files in the directory and the total amount of space it takes up is about 238 megabytes. Inside of this TGZ file is about 600 megabytes of files, so definitely compressed and I'll let it do its thing. All right, here we go. We have a whole bunch of files in here. Uh, let's see. Let me go through and see if there's anything interesting. Okay, one uh, file that I found interesting here is called history event. And when I bring it up, it shows a bunch of crash logs. So let me see if I can show you what that looks like. Here you can see shows some uptime reboot errors and such along with dates and times. Not sure how useful this will be, but as you can see, it goes quite a ways back. Yep, everything in this file is from January 10th and up to the current date. Let's go back to the directory again. Of course, you can inspect all of these files on your own and kind of investigate what they are. Some may have more information than others. All right, I'm going to go back to the main directory again. One file that has been brought up on the FOA discourse site is the props.txt. And if I bring that one up, I'll show you what that looks like. Here we go. And what's interesting about this is it shows a number of different services that are running or stopped in the system. Scrolling through that, there are some quite a few different items in here. And I think the area that some people were talking about was the configuration files here. For example, you can see this ACC Adaptive Cruise Control, which is a feature we never got on the vehicle, is marked as zero. And zero indicates not implemented or not on. And anything that's probably non-zero, such as one, two, three, indicates it is on or in effect. For example, if we look at the automatic front wipers, that has a one, which I know is true. Camping mode, that's not uh, currently working. Let's see, what else is there interesting? Front windshield heated is one. Guardian mode, that looks like an interesting one. Uh, internet browser, that's not on. Multi-collision braking is not on. Pet mode, I'd love to see that added. So yeah, quite a few things going on in this file. So if you want to look at that, that that's an interesting one to check out. And yep, so that's the bottom of the file right there. All right, I'm back at the main directory of the dump files. So that's just a quick run through of what I've seen in these files. Um, there's actually quite a bit to look through. 
I've only just begun to look at it. So just want to give you an idea of what's inside of that. And in addition, there was the option in the car to clear out the dump files or the logs. So you can do that. I think there is some discussion that it may give additional space on the car's uh, memory for additional storage. Not sure if that's the case or not. So, but if you want, download the files, keep it on your computer, then you can erase it on the car. So at least you'll have a backup on your computer. And I'm assuming over time it will replenish the log files with updates and you can check those out at a future date. So that's about it. So this is something I want to look at and I finally got a chance to check it out. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.